I think we just found out who Satoshi really is. And also, for those of you who are really nervous about the news of the Ethereum Foundation dumping Ethereum, we're covering that in today's video. And for those of you who use ThorSwap, please watch until the end. We have a really important message for you as well. So first off, let's talk about Hal Finney. He made a prediction. Some people are saying that he made a prediction that Bitcoin will reach $10 million based on the amount of Bitcoin in, that will ever exist compared to the amount of wealth that exists in the world, ranging between one and three trillion, one and three hundred trillion dollars worth of wealth. If that were all to funnel into Bitcoin, it could send Bitcoin to $10 million. That's being spread among 20 million Bitcoin. Now, for those of you who know your Bitcoin uh, information, the maximum supply of Bitcoin out there is 21 million. Yes, yes, I know. Three or four million of those are already lost forever, never to be recovered again, maybe until quantum computers come and break the encryption of Bitcoin. They mine those addresses. No, what Hal Finney was saying, he was calculating that wealth being distributed into Bitcoin if there was 20 million. Now, what is that, that difference there of 1 million? Well, we all know, maybe you don't know, but today you will, uh, that Satoshi, that his wallets have 1 million Bitcoin in it. So what did Hal Finney know? Did he, was he, uh, I mean, the guy was great at keeping himself anonymous, Satoshi, if it was Hal Finney or not, but it seems like Hal Finney was speaking from the mindset of Satoshi in that moment. So was that a little slip? There's certainly a lot of arguments to be had that Hal Finney was Satoshi. I know Toby really leans toward that. And I, Satoshi. I definitely do as well, but there's never any, we're never gonna know for sure who Satoshi is and I prefer it that way. But this is a really interesting little uh, tad of information here. Next up, we have some information from the Ethereum Foundation. They are selling Ethereum. And this is people saying, oh my gosh, they've sold at the top. <laughs> so we have people saying that the bear market isn't over and we have people saying that it's the top of the bull market already. So there's people making price predictions all over the place, but the facts remain that Ethereum Foundation sells Ethereum quite occasionally because they have to fund their operations. It's very typical for these crypto foundations for miners to liquidate and sell their cryptocurrency holdings because maybe everything that they need to pay for, they can't do it in crypto. So they're gonna need to exit and enter fiat, the dirty world of fiat for whatever that need is. So uh, in my opinion, this news of Ethereum Foundation selling is a nothing burger. And if you don't know if Toby and I are selling Ethereum or when we will, if we will, I, I highly recommend you check out learningcrypto.com. It's our awesome new website. I want you guys to check it out. Uh, there you can get access to our trade alerts, market updates, and our portfolio, as well as access, like we're always saying, to these thousands of people that are already in the CT Club, those that are new to crypto and those that are well weathered in crypto, ready to share their knowledge as well. It's a really great gr uh, group to be a part of, and I highly recommend you check it out. Lastly, we have to talk about ThorSwap. I was very excited about ThorSwap when it first came out. It was checking all the boxes. It seemed to be having a real interest in becoming as decentralized as possible. It was allowing you to swap native Bitcoin, not wrapped Bitcoin on the Ethereum blockchain, native Bitcoin with other cryptocurrencies. So it was one of the few examples of a decentralized way to make exchanges with real Bitcoin. And now it's coming out that it seems like some authorities have targeted ThorSwap, maybe, you know, what was happening with Tornado Cash and the developers there has infiltrated the decision making of those behind ThorSwap because they've taken down their, their ability for this crypto swap until now they're not re-releasing it, but with a catch. Now they're able to basically screen addresses and blacklist addresses that are known to have been uh, involved with some illicit activity. So the, the community of ThorSwap obviously is very split between this. I think that's indicative of this whole crypto space is you have the people who are just really happy that they were able to address this problem and get the ThorSwap back and up and running as fast as possible. And there's the people the other side of it that realized the trade-off that needed to be made and decentralization and censorship resistance 
had to be kind of uh, thrown out the window with Thor Swap. So pretty disappointing. Uh, there are some people on Twitter. Chris Black also has an interesting take on this. And I want to know if you agree with him or not. He says that if you're running a cryptocurrency platform and you have to make this decision of sacrifice uh, privacy, decentralization, and censorship resistance, or make that trade off and still have a platform to provide people, he says you should just throw your platform out because it, the world is better off with less platforms that sacrifice your privacy, that sacrifice your ability to uh, participate freely in this cryptocurrency space. So I want to know what your thoughts are on that. I think it's an interesting take. Anyway, that's it for today. Thank you for watching. Hit like and subscribe. Toby and I are heading out to Bitcoin Amsterdam. Kind of excited for that one. So by the time you guys are watching this, we're going to be 30,000 feet in the air for a couple hours, uh, hanging out there for a few days. So if you guys are there, hit us up. Let us know. Let us know in the comments down below. Anyway, we're running late for the airport, so we got to go. Bye, guys.